Put your glasses up, put your glasses up, a toast to the men. Welcome to a toast to the men with your guy, SD. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for taking time out of your day to break bread, to break time with me, to break some energy with me. I appreciate it. Now, toasters, as you come in, go ahead and hit the like button. That's very important. And subscribe if you are not subscribed to the channel. You don't want to miss this good content. Man, I want to touch on the trial, the defamation trial between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Uh, But before I get into that, I want to uh, encourage you to check out my live, my YouTube live from yesterday. Great live. We uh, We had a special guest on, Patricia McNeely from Twin Flame Reconnection. She's on YouTube. She has a website. Uh, Her link to the website, to her website, is in the description of that live video. Check her out. Uh, She was a a guest of uh, Phoenix Rising, who I have a segment with every Tuesday. So check us out every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. We go live. And... Man, it was just refreshing to have uh, Patricia on. I didn't know what to expect. So she talked about Twin Flames, uh, uh, touched on uh, the spiritual life, touched on uh, the chakras, uh, soulmates, uh, afterlife, before life, reincarnation, uh, man, the LGBTQ community. And, and uh, yeah, a lot of things. It was it was very refreshing, very educational and informative. So be sure to check out that video, that live video from yesterday. Man, you you won't be disappointed, I guarantee. But you know, she talked about soul ties also, and how we can be tied to someone that's not necessarily good for us, and we're not good for them. But there's such a strong connection, a strong bond that it's hard to break. And some people never break that bond. They, they die fussing and fighting and bickering uh, <laughs> with each other. Or some do break away from each other. And uh, the breakup is not smooth. It, it, I've never seen a relationship like that where the breakup is smooth. There's usually some collateral damage. Um, some some uh, court hearings, some jail time, you know, maybe some stab wounds, uh, you know, bullet wounds, and so uh, yeah, they, it it rarely, if at all, is a a uh, respectful and peaceful breakup when you have those those two types of people who are connected and then they want to separate. Man, and I think what these people are, they are codependent people. They need people, not just need, they strongly need people to lean on for different reasons. Uh, they may have a drug habit, um, they may have an uh, alcohol addiction, or uh, have, a, you know, a neediness because uh, uh, they have abandonment issues. It could be a wide range of things where they have to have somebody in their life, not only that they need, but also needs them also. And I think this is the situation uh, with Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. I've been watching this, this trial, this defamation trial, here and there, but every day. And I found out a lot of information, did some research on both of them. And uh, both of them had rocky childhoods, very rocky childhoods. Uh, and, and kind of both, well, not kind of, they both did their own thing on their own at a young age, man, 15, 16 years old. They, they uh, went out there, uh, dropped out of school and, and did their own thing as, as far as their gifts and talents, pursuing their dream, which, uh, which is honorable and brave. Uh, but um, yeah, before that, they went through some things, man. Amber saw a friend die. Uh, right after she said her friend died in a car uh, crash, she uh, became atheist and uh, didn't want to be a part of any type of religion or structure like that. Uh, 
which isn't a bad thing, but you, there's a process to engage and there's a process to, to disengage. You know, you can give up something or, or disown something, but if it's not done for the right reasons in the right way, it could be harmful in the long run. Uh, Johnny dropped out of school at a, at a young age and pursued uh, his career in music in a rock band. You know, and, and what's, what's, uh, <laughs> what was uh, inter interesting to me is he drops out at 16 to pursue, pursue a career in music with this band. And he tries to re-enroll in school two weeks later. And, and the administration, a teacher or a principal told him, no, no, go ahead and pursue your dream in music. Yeah, don't, don't re-enroll. Well, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, so, hey, it worked out for him, right? Uh, one of the biggest entertainers, actors. Uh, and you could say musicians, too. Uh, he's done a lot in the music world. A lot of people don't, a lot of people don't know about that, but he's done a lot as a musician, as a bandmate also. Uh, most people just know him as an actor. But, uh, yeah, hell of an actor. I first saw him in 21 Jump Street. But in this defamation trial, man, everything's coming out, man. Uh, she's been accused of having uh, multiple personalities, being a narcissist, uh, maybe having PTSD. He, he's been accused of being an alcoholic and uh, a drug addict or former alcoholic and drug addict. But he was definitely using and abusing while they were together. And when you hear these stories, man, which I won't really get into, but when you hear these stories that they were involved in with one another and the things they went through, you can tell that they loved each other deeply, but it was toxic. It was very toxic and they were codependent. Uh, she needed him and he really needed her and just made it made it really toxic because it wasn't for the right reasons like i say it's a way to engage and there's a way to disengage and uh anything we do got to be for the right reasons and, and rooted in health and, and righteousness uh or else it's gonna crash and burn man i, I promise you and that's what happened with them, crashed and burned. I mean, man, they got some stories. The testimony from the friends and the psychiatrists, man, it's, uh, it's epic. It's some epic stuff. Um, she's physically abused him. She has accused him, but there is no evidence, uh, no witnesses that he's abused her physically. Uh, but he, he has some graphic stories of her abusing him, and people have seen this. People have witnessed her physically abuse him. And so can't say it didn't happen with him. We can't say he didn't do it, but we can't, we can't say he did it. You know, um, we, we, yeah, we can't say he did it because there's no witnesses. There's no proof. Uh, but people have witnessed her abuse him, physically abuse him, man. And one story, he, he took two to the face with a fist, two straight to the face. He opened up to her. And like, man, you want another one? And she she got her another one in. It's like, damn. Uh, she dumped in his bed one time and sent him pictures. Yeah, man, took a took a took a dump in his bed. It's like, damn, bro. Like, you gotta throw the whole bed away. You know, that's that's that BS, man. Literally, right? So, man, they're at this point where you know they got the defamation lawsuit. Things were alleged. Things were said. Uh, you know, he tried to sue the media. Uh, that, that didn't work. I believe they were based out of the UK. Uh, and so, you know, here they are with this defamation suit. So many people are hurt, families destroyed. Um, yeah, it, it's broken up a lot, a lot of families and relationships, this whole thing. Just because two people got together who probably shouldn't be together, who were not healthy, who had probably not healed, healed, even though they reached some great heights in their careers. They have not healed. And this is why, man, you should never, never judge, uh, never judge, never be envious of anyone because you don't know what they're going through. <laughs> never be envious of anyone's fame or money or prestige. Never. 
uh, because you got to take all the other stuff that they have too. You, you can't just take the wealth and the fame. You, you got to take the, the baggage also that you know nothing about. Uh, and never pity anyone. Never pity anyone. Uh, reason being, man, we get everything we deserve, man. Don't even pity me. Anything I might go through or have gone through, don't pity me. Uh, I think we should show each other compassion. And uh, we need to shed tears uh, for and with each other. And, and lend each other a shoulder to cry on. And lean on shoulders also. But we deserve everything we get, you know, um, either from this life, you know, karmic, karmic debt, or from a previous life or lives, you don't know. But we deserve everything we get. And people come together um, by choice. Nobody put them together. And so we can't play the victim. Uh, and that's part of healing. I read a post, uh, Pam. Uh, posted on IG today, and she said part of healing is identifying that you played a part in your own uh, suffering. Yeah. And so no one's the victim in this. Uh, Johnny played a part in his own suffering. Amber played a part in her own suffering. They got with one another on the, on the court, right? So, and that's with us too. Uh, in our relationships, no one's the victim. No one is, man. Um, you just got to get out of it, man. When it's time to get out, just engage properly or just not get involved at all. You know, know the signs, know who you are and know what you can't be around, what you can't attach yourself to and, and avoid it. Uh, but, man, check out that trial. Check out the trial. It's a lot, man, to learn from. Uh, don't look at it from a judgmental eye. Look at it from discernment. Uh, what you can learn from it to not do what you learn, what you should do. And that's what we're all here for, man, to learn and teach. But, man, this is very uh, informative, this trial, what's going on in this trial. And, and it reminded me, yeah, story time. <laughs> it reminded me of a situation I was in uh, probably 15 years ago, 15, 16 years ago. I was around 30, 29, 30. Um, I was involved with this, this young lady and she was maybe two years old, two years younger than me, actually, which is, which is, uh, was unique for me. Uh, I don't, I didn't typically date younger women. Uh, so that was different for me, but, um, she was really polarizing and dynamic, her personality, man. She could really win you over beautiful girl, beautiful, sexy, but more so her personality very bubbly, energetic, and she just pulled you in, man, and uh, before I knew it, man, I was in a toxic relationship, man, I had no idea what I was getting into, uh, but, but you know, cool person, man, cool, beautiful person, but I'm not a victim, <laughs> I got with her for a reason, and uh, it was under my own accord, my own choice, right, but check this out, and I should have known this from the beginning, right, this is how I met her, I was at a spot at a bar, watch a sports bar, watching the Cowboys play, the Dallas Cowboys. And I'm at the bar, and there's people, there's some tables behind me laughing, and I hear this laugh from this female. You know, it was just a weird laugh, right? <laughs> kind of funny type laugh, right? So I turn around, and it's her, and she's a, a black girl. <clears throat> excuse me, Af African-American, and she's with a group of uh, Hispanics and white. So, you know, I'm, I'm young, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, wow, that's that's weird, you know, uh, you know, and I just thought that was weird, it's different. And so, you know, I didn't pay any mind, so I turned back around and uh, was watching the game, and yeah, that, I could hear her behind me just having a good time. So anyway, after the game was off, uh, was over. I left that spot, went to another spot around the corner, and uh, because you know that spot was really happening, the second spot. But the first spot had good TVs, so I went to this other spot, just chilling. And uh, five minutes after I arrive, I hear the door behind me open. So I turn around, and it's her, 
So like, damn, to my son, like, damn, I just saw this chick, right? So she comes in, she stands right next to me. And she's like, didn't I just see you? I said, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, we just saw each other. I was at the bar, yeah, so we chop it up. So the whole time, we're there about an hour. We're talking about the Cowboys and, and how they suck. And we're talking, she can, she can break down the game, right? She can really break down the game, positions, plays. So we just chopping it up, man. There was no flirting, nothing, nothing like that. No flirting. It's just like two people, two human beings chopping it up about the game. I was impressed she, about her knowledge. And uh, so I was like, hey, I'm about to get out of here, whatever. So she, she, uh, we both went for the hub, you know, because we kind of built a rapport, I guess, you know, so we went for the hug to say our goodbyes. I go in for the hug, man, she kisses me on my lips and puts her tongue in my mouth, right? But man, that, that mess turned me on, right? But I should have known then. This is a wild girl, right? It threw me off, too, because, like, there was no flirting, at least not on my part. And I didn't sense she was flirting with me. I just thought we just hit it off, like, real cool, talking about the game that we just watched. But I, I never would have expected a, a kiss or her to kiss me, and, and I wasn't going to kiss her. So, man, that, that just threw me off, man. But uh, shit, after that, man, we exchanged numbers, right? <laughs> so uh, time goes on. You know, we, we started building, communicating the next few days. And everything's cool, man. We're spending time with each other. You know, everything's cool. Cool check. Everything's cool. But then eventually, I noticed that anytime we would go out and have drinks, man, she would just be out of it. Like, could not function. After like two drinks, sometimes one drink. And man, I'm talking about to the point where I have to carry her to her vehicle because rarely did we we uh, drive together. We would meet up, right? So I would have to carry her to her vehicle. And, and sometimes, you know, I'm like, damn, uh, let's leave your vehicle, vehicle here. I'll take you home. And you just got to find a way to get your, get your car in the morning. You know, I, I don't need that on my conscience. So, uh... Man, this just happened way too many times. Man, I'm trying to figure it out. It's like, damn, what, what the hell is up, right? I asked her, I was like, man, are you allergic to alcohol? Should you be drinking? And she's like, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm good, you know. Uh, she said she thinks it was connected that she gets drowsy and sleepy because of some medication she takes. And she shouldn't be taking it, and then she drinks alcohol, and she shouldn't do it. I'm like, man, well, that's irresponsible, even if that's the case. That's very irresponsible uh, to be out and about. And then behind the wheel, you know, should have paid attention to that, right? Listen to my own logic. Uh, but I didn't because her energy was so powerful. Like, she was a cool chick, like a very cool chick. Sense of humor, all that, man. Anytime I spent the night at her house, I would wake up to breakfast. Anytime she spent the night at my house, I would wake up to breakfast. She would make her way, find her way around my kitchen. And she knew her way around the kitchen. And uh, this cool chick, man, easy to get along with, just really cool. And, uh, man, this thing just kept happening. But then someone told me, I won't tell who that someone is because she, <laughs> she might be watching this. And uh, she'll put two and two together. Even though she probably know I'm telling, you know, her story or our story. Uh, but someone told me that she was popping pills, uh, not not prescribed medication, some other type of pills. And so I addressed her, man. I addressed her on it. And uh, she confessed, but she said it wasn't a problem and, and things like that. And uh, but it was a problem. Because now I gotta play, I gotta, I gotta play babysitter. I gotta play chaperone, because you can't handle yourself. I'm just not with that. So it is a problem. But I still don't cut her off at this time, man. I still don't cut her off. And then time goes on, and I'm noticing some other things. I'm noticing 
yeah, she's cool and all, but things are kind of changing. It seems like at certain points, man, she's trying to provoke me. Like she's trying to provoke anger out of me or something. Now, we never had an issue or uh, any any problems about uh, infidelity or somebody else involved or, or nothing like that. But she would just do certain things. I, I was like, damn, is she intentionally trying to get a rise out of me? Uh, I just felt she was. So I'm like, let me psychoanalyze her. Let me get some more information about her history. Make her feel more comfortable opening it up. So I'll know what I'm dealing with to protect myself. And I can make the proper decisions. Uh, so I did that. She started opening up more to me over time. And I started learning about her past. A lot of abuse. A lot of abuse. Uh, I'm talking about. I'm talking about kidnapping stuff. Uh, spouse holding her hostage. Uh, some crazy stuff. Dragging her, dragging her from the from the front door to the bedroom. Can't leave the bedroom for five, six hours. Some torture, <clears throat> man. Uh, some other stuff that went on, man. And uh, and 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 you know, she got this thing, man, with with, with the pills and the alcohol. And uh, another thing was too. I did my research and I'm hearing this stuff and I'm feeling like she's trying to provoke me and she's experienced extreme abuse. And through my research, I've, I discovered that a lot of women who have experienced abuse uh, begin to get off on it. Yeah, they, they it's like it's like an arousal thing, uh, aphrodisiac, uh, something taboo, sexual taboo that they really get off on to be abused um i know it might sound weird but this happens man uh the mind is a is a tricky thing uh but that's what she was trying to get out of me so i don't know if it was just sexual arousal for her or this was her way of seeing if i loved her you know uh, I, i'm not quite sure but i brought this information to her and asked her like do you i be noticing this that you try to do this, do you do you get off on this? You know, and and she just broke it down and confessed, like, yeah, I do, I, I get off on this. Uh, she's like that abuse did something to me, and she gets off on it. Uh, man, the, the wildest thing, man, the wildest thing. Uh, but I saw this in a movie too, uh, similar to that, Black Snake Moan, with Samuel Jackson in it, and. Uh, yeah, yeah, check that out. Check that movie out, man. Black Snake Moan. And that'll explain what I'm talking about. But uh, it wasn't a good fit because I don't do drugs. Uh, I maintain, even drinking alcohol, I'm very disciplined, man. Never had a DUI, DWI, nothing. Uh, and you can still get those and, and be disciplined. Just, you know, you got caught up. You can not have a problem with alcohol or drugs and get get one of those. But, you know, I never had any, uh, but, you know, just not my thing, man. I'm not into the whole, <laughs> the whole abuse thing. Like, so it's just not a good match, but I still stay connected because the energy and, and, and it was so strong and she was just, it, she had a beautiful spirit, man, but she just had some things going on. A uh, hard worker, man. People loved her. Her job loved her. Family loved her. People loved her. And at the time, I was working in the skincare company I had uh, that I created. And she helped me with the sales. She had the personality that could get you sales. She could sell, man. She was a hustler. Like when I say a hustler, she's a hustler, not a scammer. She's a hustler. She knows how to make a month, uh, make dollars, and she knows how to turn a dollar. And uh, I was attracted to that, too. So, man, one time it got to the point where we met up at a spot. And uh, how we always do, hey, I'll meet you at your house. We drove separate cars. I'll meet you at your spot. And, man, I'm at her spot. I'm waiting. 
I'm waiting. Man, I'm waiting. Uh, and I had a key to her spot, so I'm I'm just waiting, man. It crashed. And uh, I'm calling too, right? I'm calling, I'm calling. Her people are calling me. Have you talked to her? They're calling her. They can't get in touch with her. her sister, her brother, they can't get in touch with her. Nobody can get in touch with her, right? So I don't know what's going on. Well, eventually she answers, all groggy. So what happened was when we separated from the spot, we're supposed to go to her house. She goes to another spot. She thought I said we're going to another spot. That's what she says. And uh, she's waiting on me in the parking lot and falls asleep. Hey, I don't know if it's true or not, but she's never, I'll say, I never called her in a lie. An entire relationship, I'll say that. I never called her in a lie, and I'm a good listener. Uh, so, you know, got to take care of her word because she didn't have a history of lying. Even when I would approach her with stuff, she would confess or or own up to it or say, yeah, that, that's true. Um, you know, just different things, you know, I, I noticed. I would call her out on it. She was like, yeah, that's true. She wouldn't deny it. She's like, that's true. I do have a problem with that. That's true what they said. I do do that. So I had no reason not to believe her. But um, that was the point I said, yeah, it, it's too much, man. This is too much. You got a, you got a problem. You got a serious problem. And this might take me down a, a dark, dark hole if I stay connected. Now, I wasn't worried about getting into whatever she was into. I wasn't worried about that. But I knew I would end up being a babysitter, right? I knew that. And the most important thing for me is respect. And so, you know, you're going to eventually uh, lose respect when you become someone's babysitter, you know, caretaker. You, you just are. Uh, so, yeah, I, I ain't playing that role. So I cut it off. And, uh, you know, she was hurt, you know, she was hurt, man. And, you know, we stayed in contact just on the phone, never saw each other, just on the phone or text, you know, for, 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 for a few uh, months, man. And, uh, periodically for a few years, you know, until we just, you know, let it all go. But, uh, you know, that, that thing there, man, could have took me somewhere like depth, like Amber Heard. You know, and uh, I'm sure some of you guys and gals have been in situations similar to that. But you got to know <laughs> when, to, when to cut it off. And you got to know when not to even engage. Man, the signs were there for me not to engage, man. This woman didn't even know me. And she put her tongue in my mouth the first time we met. Uh, Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. But one time I was, you know, her sister was asking, how did we meet? And I was telling her the story, as I told you. And I told her about the kiss, the tongue. And her sister goes, yeah, yeah, she does that. If she's been drinking and she's feeling you, she does that. So I look at her. She just puts her head down. I said, damn, man, how many, how many mouths you done stuck your tongue in doing this? Like, man, the signs are there, bro. Sweet girl. She's doing well, too, man. I've I seen her online. She's doing well. Got her man. Got her Got her new baby. Actually, uh, uh, the, the girl, the little girl looks like she's about four or five, man. And so, uh, you know, they got the house, picket fence. It's all good, man. So I hope she's doing well. Looks like it, right? But you never know what's going on inside that home, right? But, yeah, man, know when to not engage. Know how to disengage. Yeah. It's going. It's it's detrimental. Well, I'm not detrimental. It's imperative. It's imperative that you know this and have the discipline to do this, or you can go through a lot of suffering, and you played a part in that. As always, from me to you, love, peace.